Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Weekly Conversations Podcast. And in today's episode, I am going to be discussing Dan Schneider, the man behind some of Nickelodeon's biggest shows and his disturbing allegations surrounding his time at Nickelodeon. For those of you who might not know who Dan Schneider was, one of the most influential producers at Nickelodeon, this man created iconic shows like iCarly, Victorious, Drake and Josh, Zoe 101, and Amanda Show, just to name a few. If you grew up in the 2000s, you're probably aware of his shows and you may have watched them at some point in time. And I can tell you from my experience, I've watched iCarly, Victorious, Drake and Josh. I haven't watched Zoe 101 or The Amanda Show, but I have watched Kid Danger and Sam and Cat. Those shows I have seen. I don't know about you all, but those shows were... Uh, something that I enjoyed as I was getting older when I was a kid, when I was a young teenager those were definitely shows that were very eye-catching very enjoyable I liked it and it was nice but definitely now as I've gotten older I haven't quite seen them as much or watched them back as frequently as I was when I was younger but it's definitely nice to go back and watch them occasionally and see what they were like But to continue forward, behind the scenes of this man's uh, time at Nickelodeon, things started to emerge. So let's get right into this conversation. So, to start, who is Stan Schneider? Well, he started his career in the 1980s as an actor, but eventually moved into writing and producing. Nickelodeon hired him in the 90s and he quickly became the go-to guy for their biggest live action hit. At first glance, Schneider seemed like a genius. Yes, because he wrote a bunch of successful shows and he did everything out of the park that no one thought he would be able to do. But yet, we will not neglect he had a neck for creating shows that kids and teens loved. I definitely loved watching his shows. I enjoyed what he was doing. I also forgot to mention that uh, Keenan and Cal, a show that I watched when I was younger, an amazing uh, show, and it was definitely something that I don't think anyone, even today, could ever recreate of what was done, but an amazing show to say the least, and he also created a bunch of films, even though Good Burger was a great film that I watched, I haven't seen it recently, but I remember as a kid I watched it and I liked it, but I don't know now much as I've gotten older, but to continue, but as his shows grew in popularity, rumors started to surface about inappropriate behavior behind the scenes, because this grown adult man at the time. I think he was in his 40s or early 50s. Real creep. Real creep. And you'll see that over the years, several disturbing allegations emerged ranging from creepy interactions with young actors to abusive work conditions. So let's break down some of the very important key points of what was happening in the world of Nickelodeon. What was this man really doing? And how... Oh, how did this man get away with it for so many years that no one to this day has put this man in a courthouse or put him in trial, even slammed him in the jail cell? So as we will see today of what this man's time was at Nickelodeon and what led him to eventually get away with so many of his disturbing allegations after his outbreak, and removal in 2018. So let's continue and get right on. First, we will get into the foot fetish allegations. Wow. One of the strangest 
and most frequently discussed accusations is related to Schneider's uh, uh, apparent obsession with feet. If you've watched his shows, you might notice that feet seem to appear quite a bit. Characters often seen doing weird things with their feet, like painting toes or feet are frequently simply highlighted in odd ways because he just loved to make sure that in any way, shape or form, he will take any opportunity just to use his motive to show feet. This might seem inconsistent or just quirky, but many fans and critics pointed out how often these moments occur in his shows. People started to question whether this was intentional or if it hinted at something more sinister. In 2013, a Reddit thread gained attention for compiling clips from Schneider shows that all featured feet in some way. Around this time, people began to call out the fact that Schneider often asked his young actors to partake in scenes that focused on their feet. This fueled speculation about whether Schneider had a foot fetish and was using his shows to fulfill his fulfill it in inappropriately well i want to say something i have seen many many youtube videos about this topic and i assume for maybe 80 percent of you you've seen this topic being discussed on tiktok because you all have the world's shortest the world's shortest atten- attention spam of a child and for those of you who got it in about a two minute period or about three i assume you would see that feet was shown a lot if you saw iCarly if you saw Sam and Cat if you saw Victorious like I swear to god this man took advantage of every single moment he had and just started shoving feet and it wasn't something that he did maybe you know once as a joke or twice as a joke no this man took every possible moment he had and just started shoving feet he just shoved feet on the screen and it's interesting of how many times he just used feet to fulfill his fetish to just accomplish something and on twitter also sam and cat's twitter for the show he used that account as a motive to just tell a bunch of young people i want to see your feet I want to see what you can do. Like he told them, right? Salmon Cat Tuesday or something underneath their feet. And he da- he did it. A bunch of vulnerable young people actually went and did what they were told by this man. And imagine being him and seeing a bunch of innocent young people who had no idea what on earth was going on. And he just started to go, you know what? This is great for me. I love this. And he just got probably like an erection or satisfactory or some sort of like an arouse from what he was seeing and how he was able to get away with it. Honestly, how this man isn't in a jail cell is honestly beyond my youngest wildest dreams. Honestly, think about that for a minute. How was he able to get away with so many of these disturbing things? First being the foot fetish. And then the many more that will come after it. But how? I don't know. Second, Nickelodeon's investigation. Things really started to unveil, unravel, sorry, in 2018. When 
Dan Schneider suddenly parted ways with Nickelodeon after nearly two decades. What's interesting is that neither Schneider nor Nickelodeon gave a clear reason for his departure at the time. I wonder why. However, according to reports from Deadline and New York Times, an internal investigation and Nickelodeon found complaints about Schneider's behavior, including uh, temptational abstracts and the way he treats his staff. While Nickelodeon claimed they didn't find evidence of sexual misconduct, the obtience of Snyder's existence led many to believe there was more to the story, but yet Nickelodeon did not want to share of what was happening. They just wanted to give a small, sweet, and innocent statement saying, we don't care about Dan Schneider, we want nothing to do with him, and so the We will not do anything. We will just let him roam free, be a peaceful man, and just walk away. Walk away, they say. Which is very interesting. Of what they probably knew, but didn't want to share with the public. Interesting, man. Very, very interesting. Then, alleged abuse of power. Which is interesting, as we will see here. Another key issue was the alleged abusive work environment Schneider created. Former employees and actors have hinted at the toxic nature of working on his shows. There were claims about Schneider's was controlling, demanding, and would often throw tantrums on set because this grown adult man was such a child where if nothing went his way he would act like a two-year-old baby crying and whining and doing a bunch of mumbling and hissing and pissing and going where are you all how may you all not listen to me in power I hold the fist of iron. I control you. I'm giving you a hit show to ride the success over. You see how he is in his workplace. Because if you watched any videos, you will see this man took advantage of his power. He did everything and anything to do whatever he liked, however he liked it, if no one listened to how he wanted to do it, and when it wanted to be done, he will throw the fattest fit like a cock. Honestly, people, keep up with this man. How is he not in jail? Once more mentioned. Some former child actors have spoken out about the high pressure, optimism, and the mental toll took on them this really tells you what types of atmospheres and pressure and tolls this took on them because many people have said and if you do watch again a few people that really did go into deep deep detail the man made everything so intense in the atmosphere he made the environment hard if nothing went his way he would make it very more different probably more thick a thicker harder tougher to work environment then it should have been easier calmer relaxing more fun more enjoyable but remember this was the 2000s that man could do anything and in those days you couldn't get caught Because no one gave a single shit. Then, Jeanette McCurdy, who starred in iCarly and Sam and Cat, has been one of the more vocal former Nickelodeon stars. All through, although she hasn't directly mentioned Schneider in the most, in most of her interviews. In her memoir, I'm glad my mom died. 
she did open up about the mean mistreatment she faced as a young actor, which many fans believe could have been related to working conditions on Schneider's sets. Many stories you hear of young actors being traumatized and forever scarred for their adult lives is interesting to me as an individual of what was actually happening behind the stuff me and you were watching on television, the stuff that maybe we go back to revisit, and what was actually happening in those conditions. What were they actually doing? How were they doing it? And when doing something, what were they actually able to get away with that none of us at those moments of time were able to notice? It's interesting how the times, as you read through, have changed. Like, as you listen and you are like witnessing the different times and the different things that were happening, you realize that nothing ever caught up to when it should have been. It all went to a different time, a different sector, and in those sectors, everything was being done differently. And it's interesting how many young actors just got taken advantage of. No one really questioned authority, and look, Jeanette McCurdy got scarred for life. May God only be the witness of what was happening and how it was happening. The poor woman may have gone through so much sinister situations to the point now as a grown adult, she has to live with those things and may only God help her in her problems and situations that she may go through as an adult. Then, online speculations and the Me Too movement. Wow! When the hashtag Me Too movement gained momentum in 2017, more people began revisiting the rumors surrounding Schneider. Interesting, is it not? It took people four years later to really bring this man's ugliness to the front of the door. Really? Four years. Four years for all of us to just sit down and go, Hmm, this ugly adult man has done some, you know, weird shit. Time to put him on a pedestal. Let's not judge him. But now they all go, hmm, 2017, we'll start picking on him. Then came a very interesting point where there was a lot of online speculation, particularly on social media, where fans started questioning the Claudian science on this issue. Despite all the allegations, Schneider himself has never faced criminal charges and has denied any wrongdoing. Again, this man's full of bullshit. He will neglect anything just to tell people, you know, this didn't happen and it never actually came to be. He just keeps brushing it under the rug. You know, not wanting anyone to know his dirty, dirty secret. Because remember, what he did then, he never thought anything would come out of it. He never thought anyone would ever know his dirty little secret. But look now. People have come to discuss this topic. Have come to put all of his situations in different sectors of topics and tell everyone. Look at what he's done. Look how he has done it, and look what he, as a grown adult man, was able to get away with so many years that no one had questioned it until later in life. Imagine working with this man, and 13 years later, people say, look what he's done, look how he's done them, and when he had done them, what, what did those people go through? No one questioned it until 2017. Four years later, people went, hmm. And even today, people have completely just ripped off the wallpaper for Dan Schneider. Everything has come to broad daylight. He can still continue and say, never happened. This didn't go down. This never was a thing. He can always sit down and neglect anything that has happened. 
but we will all know the truth of what he was capable of doing and what he did and how he should never have done it. Then, one of the most disturbing parts of his whole situation is how these allegations have been talked about for years, yet no one signa- si- signified actions has been taken, at least not publicly. Fans and advocators continue to push for more transparency from Nickelodeon and Hollywood in general when it comes to protecting child actors. As I mentioned earlier, how this man at this point isn't in a jail cell and has not gone into being questioned in a court of law and many, many people have not sat down, not even with him, the many others that have worked with him haven't sat down and really testified against him. And once those accusations and everything adds up, how has no one gone to jail for this man? Let him suffer in a jail cell. Like, honestly, how is this man still free? How is this man still able to walk around scotch-free and just have nothing handed to him in punishment he can just walk around being like oh, i'm an ordinary everyday normal type of guy my man go to jail suffer the punishment let those people sleep that you have suffered let them go and have a night's rest of many years of punishment and many they had to punish so much from him they got punished by him they did so much and then yet, he still walks around as if nothing's ever going to go happen to him. he will eventually catch up to him. And now we come to where is Dan Schneider today. Since leaving Nickelodeon in 2018, Schneider has stayed pretty low-key. He resurf- resurfaced briefly in 2021 saying he was working on new projects. Really, I'd love to see them. Despite the allegations and rumors, he seems to be interested in continuing his career. Whether Hollywood will welcome him back remains to be seen. But for many fans of his shows, the damage has already been done. The nostalgia people once had for Schneider's work has been clouded by the allegations surrounding his behavior and raised serious questions about his treatment of young stars in the entertainment industry. Then comes the most important point, everyone. I have watched many videos about this man and some of what was talked about, like how Jamie Lynn Spears, the sister of Britney Spears, got pregnant at such a young age, at the age of 16, I do believe, and people say, and I do believe it, that Dad Schneider is the father of her daughter because of how similar she looks to the man and what resemblance she has to the man himself. And they were trying to do somewhat of a cover-up by getting boyfriends lined up being like, The father of Jamie Lynn Spears' daughter is this man, or this man, you know. He just tried to neglect the truth of what actually happened. And she knows the truth, but she never publicly went on record or on social media or somewhat of a platform and said, Listen, guys, he has done this to me when I was X age. And when I was at X age, he did this, this, and this. I would insist on anyone, watch the videos that were done about this man, get more of a better detail of what was actually happening and what he was actually able to do. The stuff that he was able to get away with is honestly shocking, honestly, honestly shocking. Listen, if you ever had the opportunity to sit down and watch the documentary Quiet On Set, you'll find that his time as a producer on Nickelodeon and what he was able to get away with and what he actually did is mind baffling, mind blowing and very, very disgusting. And 
I just saw uh, like watch mojo videos of like the aftermath and what was being discussed more of like a summarization of that documentary and honestly the shocking stuff that happened to like Drake Bell with uh, Brian Peck and what Brian Peck was able to do after getting uh, himself released from jail and being able to work in kids television and what other stuff that were you know were done and how they were able to being done is shocking honestly after you watch or like watch videos on youtube about that documentary or you actually watch the entire documentary yourself the type of stuff that not only schneider but the people he works with were actually able to get away with is mind-blowing is genuinely baffling to the point where you can't even comprehend if those individuals went down with sinister memories and scars for life what other stuff was he actually able to get away with even if they were not mentioned in the documentary that were discussed in youtube videos what was he actually able to do that no one knows about how has he not been arrested not been in a jail so not been testified in a full room of a public court of law and not been testified against by at least a thousand plus people not only him i'd wish to see the people he also works with to being with him and being criticized and judged and humiliated and going through the suffering of what they've done coming back to haunt them and them paying the price honestly i wish to see the day this man goes in a court of law they are reporting on this all over Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and I would love to just sit down and discuss this topic and say, guys, listen, this man is being judged, criticized, and being testified against in a court of law. And as we've seen in these statements and stuff, this is what they've been. Uh, this is what people have said. This is what's been happening. This is what's being reported. These are clips from this, but I'd love to sit down and see those things and get straight forward towards these things, but I would just love to see that day actually coming about. Until then, thank you all very much for watching, for listening, for hearing what I have to say. I'd love if you all, sub not subscribe, but comment down. In the comment section tell me what you feel tell me how you feel about it tell me your opinions your own insights and i'll catch you all in the next one goodbye